Five Nights at Freddy's is a series of horror games created by game developer Scott Cawthon. The first installment in the franchise released on August 8th, 2014, and it quickly rose to fame due to the way it revolutionized its genre through its unconventional approach and its in-depth lore that still has people talking to this day. Throughout its many unique games, Five Nights at Freddy's always follows the same basic formula. A protagonist attempts to survive against deadly animatronics that may or may not be under a supernatural influence. As is normal in game development, there is always some unused or removed content that is left out of the final release. This video will be talking about all of the unused content from the main 9 games as well as the 4 spin-offs. This video will not be covering any lore, and will assume you have at least a basic knowledge of the games in question, so spoiler warnings are in effect. Bearing all that in mind, let's start with the first installment in the series, the original Five Nights at Freddy's. Right away, we can derive from the game's trailer that some things are inconsistent with the final release. We also get to see Bonnie running down the hallway in place of Foxy, and we also get to see him take off the top half of his head to reveal his endoskeleton. This shot of the animatronics all looking towards the camera, despite many people swearing up and down that they've seen it, is actually not present in the final game. This is a fantastic example of something called the Mandela Effect. Another piece of unused content featured on Scott's channel can be seen in the original gameplay footage video, or what can be assumed to be a cut lives counter being displayed at the start of Night 5. Funnily enough, this was only present in the beta version of the game, and because of this, we can likely assume it was a short-lived feature that Scott simply didn't end up liking. Speaking of the beta and demo versions, the monitor interface used to look quite different. As opposed to labeled buttons, it featured camera icons with cones angled in the direction the camera is facing. On top of that, some of the cameras are actually in different places. Uh, for example, the backstage camera used to be above the door, but was later moved to the opposite corner. The kitchen camera was also slightly relocated, not that it matters since it has no video feed. The original Help Wanted ad in the newspaper at the beginning of the game was also slightly different in the original demo. It was later changed with a slightly different camera angle, typo corrections, and an altered phone number, probably to avoid prank calls. There are also two images left in the final game that remain unused due to being obviously irrelevant after the demo. In the original mobile port, the game opened with this render of Freddy from the game cover, which was removed later when Click Team released the remastered edition. The old mobile port also featured a unique sound that played when the hallway lights were activated, which was also fixed in the later remastered version. Hello. When the game was greenlit on Steam, the associated page had this icon with an endoskeleton design that wouldn't make it into the final game. It features sharper, triangular teeth and red eyes. When Scott was creating the fourth animatronic character, he originally wound up with a wolf character, scrapped it, and then a beaver character, which reminded him too much of his old game, Chipper and Sons Lumber Company. Eventually, he settled on Foxy the Fox. Fun bit of trivia, Foxy's model was made on a 14-hour car ride, which he attributes his more weather design to. On the official Steam page, some screenshots used are actually missing the night text in the corner by the time. This is the last piece of unused content from the original Five Nights at Freddy's. Overall, Five Nights at Freddy's 2 has less unused content than the first game, but actually has an entirely cut game mechanic. There remains a sprite for a toxicity meter, which was later confirmed in Dalko's Scott Cawthon interview to be a way to avoid the player keeping the Freddy mask on for too long. Just so you're aware, it's going to be a trend that many of these things are confirmed in the interview that Daco had with Scott Cawthon. There are also three unused character sprites, two of which belonging to the puppet. The first is a close-up similar to a frame from the jump scare animation, only lacking the white eyes. The next is a full body render, complete with cross brace and strings attached. The file name is Puppet in Office, which implies the puppet may have appeared in the office in a similar fashion to other animatronics in earlier ideas for the game. The other character sprite is this one of Toy Chica, which seems to have a similar implication as the one I just talked about, acting like Toy Bonnie when entering the office. For some reason, this game also features the sprites for the unused lives feature from the first game, and also the obligatory remaining demo text. 
The pre-release content this time around is a little different, as the second game began the trend of Scott's teaser images from his website. This teaser image that depicts Mangle and Foxy has a lot that I think is worth talking about. Well, for starters, the Foxy model used here is not the same model that makes it into the final game. I think that's rather apparent. Uh, rather, it appears to be the model used in the first game, and I'm not sure what this implies because this was not the first teaser, so Scott had most definitely already decided to use slightly different designs for the Withered animatronics. Uh, my hypothesis is that Withered Foxy's model was just not done yet. But the more obvious inconsistency lies here with Mangle's hook. Now anyone who's played the game knows that Mangle does not have a hook. Um, and I have another idea for how that happened. I think it's just a product of Mangle being taken apart and maybe it was never completely removed from the design, but future similar designs for Mangle and other Foxy types didn't really have hooks either, so I don't know. One more thing about Mangle that I don't think I've actually heard anybody else talk about before is that she appears to be lacking an eyelid or any eyelashes here, but that could just be due to the lighting, so I, I'm just gonna stop there with that one. The last inconsistency in Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is just the flashlight text above the battery display is missing in some of the early screenshots, and the same edit to the Help Wanted page from the first game is also made in the prequel for the same reasons. No prank calls. The third game doesn't have much in the realm of unused content, but it is present. There are four unused sprites of the puppet, one of them actually being the same close-up that went unused in the previous game for some reason. A seal vent button sprite is present, though this mechanic would obviously be replaced by simply double-clicking the camera in the final release. There's also text referencing a scratch seventh night and altered green text for the second night for some reason. Similar to the first game, a render of Springtrap could be seen when starting up the old mobile port, which was subsequently removed after the remaster, and this game also contains the obligatory leftover demo text and still has the lives counter sprites from the first and second games. Finally, the Steam page. Some screenshots from before the release are missing both the night and time counters, unlike the first game only missing the night counter. Other screenshots also showed the unfinished map interface, missing the play audio and map toggle buttons, though it may be implied this is done intentionally for the sake of cleaner screenshots for the Steam page. Five Nights at Freddy's 4 actually has quite a bit of unused content for various reasons. I'll start with the easier ones. There is unused text that says Chapter, which is speculated to have been originally used to separate the End of Night minigames into chapters. Uh, there's also an animated star sprite that goes completely unused, and we don't really know what it could have been for. Like the previous games, there are demo leftovers, though they appear different this time, especially this otherwise unused completion screen that I think actually looks pretty cool. This game also has its own pre-menu render for its old mobile port, just like the other ones. It was fixed in the remaster, blah blah blah. The next cut feature I think is actually quite interesting. In the Halloween DLC, the game had a programmed event after beating the game's 20-20-20-20 mode, nearly identical to what you'd be treated to after beating Nightmare Mode, except the chest can have the locks removed, though it still cannot be opened. I'll expand on this piece of unused content in the next section. For pre-release content, uh, this teaser actually has Nightmare Foxy having a really long snake-like tongue, pretty out there, but aside from the title screen and some merchandise, he is never actually seen with it. It's confirmed later by Scott uh, that apparently he just didn't think the tongue was very scary, so he removed it. Another bit of unused content regarding a teaser image can be seen here with Nightmare Mangle. You can see Nightmare Mangle hanging from the ceiling, like the original Mangle is capable of, but this feature is not actually seen anywhere in the final game. To end this game's unused content, there's actually a very slight difference in the audio used for the jump scare in the trailer versus in the final game, and it sounds a bit more like an animal than what we ended up with, and to be honest, I kinda like it. It sounds scarier in my opinion, and I wish we would've gotten this one instead. Five Nights at Freddy's World actually has 
quite a bit of removed content. Uh, for starters, there's an entirely unused music track, Ice Cave, which you can hear playing right now. Uh, and another piece of content related to audio is this unused JJ voice line, which I think is pretty hilarious. Now I'm going to kick your ass! Wait, what? I, I can't see that in the game. There's also hidden text in the game's code every time you beat the game, no matter what ending you do, and it says, well, congratulations, you beat a fictional monster from a fictional game, bravo, big deal. The next one is actually the result of a programming error and was not explicitly removed from the game, though it's not present. After 8-Bit Fredbear first tells you to search for the clock, he is meant to say, if you keep following him, you will only finish a story. There is something more important for you to do. But instead, it automatically brings the player to the loading screen, ignoring this dialogue entirely. Remember in the last section when I said something related to the box, the infamous box, would be in this game's removed content? Well, a sprite for the open box is actually present in this game's files. It is theorized that this might have just been intentionally left in the game as a way for Scott to mess with the fans, but who knows. The rest of the non-pre-release features are sort of miscellaneous, so I'll try to run through them a bit quicker. There's a sprite for unlocking a red chip named Curse Haunting, despite the chip itself not existing within the game. It may have been replaced with the green chip Quick Start Party. Brow Boy was originally meant to be a common enemy like Ball Boy, as can be assumed by this unused animated sprite. There's a swimming turtle sprite derived from Slumberfish that was likely a catchable creature in Dee Dee's fishing hole. It's the only non-robotic creature in its associated collection, so this is probably why it was never included in the final game. There's an alternate animated cupcake sprite, and its programming tells the animation to stop after the cupcake has bobbed it down once. There's a text sprite that says Party Creation for the character selection menu from earlier versions of the game. It was removed when Update 1.20 added more playable characters. In the original release, this star sprite would have been used to signify if the player had gotten any of the three endings. There is a file that appears to determine a strength stat for characters on the character selection menu. It is never used in the game, and some programming of the expression is left in the game files. Finally, on to the pre-release content. Though it isn't used in the game, Scott refers to this game's characters as the adventure animatronics, which is backed up by copyrighted phrases. These two enemies, unnamed Robot Bear and Golden Mechrab, were never used in the final game, despite appearing in trailers and early screenshots. On another early screenshot, Shadow Freddy is shown with the Pizza Wheel 2 attack, which is later replaced with Escape Key. This next one is one of my favorites in this whole video because it just doesn't make any sense. So, in the official trailer, Freddy is shown to have a diagonal walking sprite, and in the first release of the game, Freddy could not walk diagonally. This already doesn't really make any sense. In version 1.20, Freddy can walk diagonally, but for whatever reason, the depicted sprite from the original trailer was actually not recycled for this purpose. I could not possibly tell you why that is, but that is how it is. Finally, the slow start enemies chip from the initial release of the game was missing its colon and has since had its spot reassigned to the block jump scare chip. After that huge chunk of unused content, Sister Location tones it down just a little bit. We start with an unused sprite of Ballora receiving a shock from the primary control module spot with her endoskeleton face exposed. I think this actually looks pretty cool. Apparently this was meant to display when activating the controlled shock, which is not surprising. Uh, one of my favorite things in this video is this unused render of Circus Baby, which might have been like a, an early game over screen, I don't know, but I think it looks really cool. Another trend we've seen before, but here we can see an early map that would have been overlaid while in the vents, in the primary control module, and the circus control. There's also a technically unused 8th minigame cutscene associated with the custom night, though it is near identical to the first cutscene, just with the neighbors looking a little disturbed, so there's not really any reason for it to have been in the final game. Another interesting bit is these two unused voice lines for the female computer voice. Motion trigger. Technician control. Glass pressure trigger. Please do not push against the glass. In terms of pre-release content, the fourth teaser depicts seven Bitty Babs, but there are only two at any specific moment in the actual game, so it doesn't actually make that much sense. 
One of the teaser shows Bon Bon and the events related to the Custom Night, though this never actually happens. To end it off, there's actually an absurd plethora of unused Funtime Freddy voice lines, and apparently Funtime Freddy was originally meant to have a German accent? Listen to this. Glad to hack again. Come closer. I'll sing a song for you. Oh, oh, oh. Hello, little children. Glad to see you back again. Come closer. I'll sing a song for you. Okay, so in this section, I'm going to combine Pizzeria Simulator and Ultimate Custom Night since they are functionally meant to be one game and the amount of content that is unused warrants them being combined. In Pizzeria Simulator, we can see an unused star sprite which would go on to be used in Ultimate Custom Night. Uh, there's an animated sprite that shows the tape recorder may have originally been reversible, as well as several unused buttons that are related to the tape recorder. An unused Molten Freddy blueprint is also present, describing him as having the most remnant of Afton's creations, and an unused white arrow that was also found probably for use in the game menu, I don't know. In Ultimate Custom Night, a piece of demo text remains that describes a point limit for playing. There's also five unused character sprites in this game's files. Adventure Endo 01 and Candide Cadet were both promised for the game by Scott, but Adventure Endo 01 never made it. Rockstar Chica also has an unused flipped sprite for appearing on the right side of the office, likely because of her flipped bib. Speaking of Chicas, Toy Chica had her movement and jump scare flipped after patch 1.021. The last unused character sprite is this animated sprite of Bonnet getting her nose booped, which doesn't seem to have any place in the final game at all, so I don't know why it's here. Finally, there is an unused desk sprite with brighter lighting and fixed eyebrows on Freddy, along with an unused title graphic that simply says, Custom Night. The first installment in the newer Five Nights at Freddy's narrative, Help Wanted, contains quite a bit of unused content to be found. For one, there's an unused Spring Bonnie texture that remains unutilized. There are no differences between it and Springtrap except for a small stitch indent on the upper left hand side of the torso. It's possible this may have been the original planned model for Glitch Trap, but we don't know for sure. And also full models for blacklight variants of the main four animatronics, Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. Though Foxy's textures are like 5% complete with just like the eyes, so that's weird. There is an unused animation of a Freddle going underneath bed implying they may have originally been planned for the Night Terrors mode. A random doll model known as Toy Proxy in the game files can also be found, likely a placeholder for plush crap. There's also an alternate version named Big Toy Proxy, which was probably a placeholder in the Night Terror sections as well, having uh, animations that resembled those of Funtime Freddy and Nightmare Fredbear. There's also an unused older model for Chica's Cupcake, which has a more vibrant purple and takes its iris textures from the Funtime animatronics. There are several remaining files that suggest a multiplayer mode may have been considered with a folder labeled multiplayer containing files such as character info, character info table, MP game mode, and similar concepts. There's also a photo of the second game's map taken from the Freddy files, an official guidebook to Five Nights at Freddy's. It shows the path the withered animatronics can take in the second game's associated mode. There's an entire 20 image slideshow of showbiz pizza animatronic and endoskeleton photos. They are found in the prize counter TV screen after pressing the red button on the exotic butter's basket, which was seen in some early gameplay footage. Scott removed these upon the release of the game due to fans comparing the images to actual showbiz pizza photos. For some final miscellaneous features before we get into the game's DLC, we have early textures of the processed poultry proxel chicken box which were found with slight differences including a cartoon chicken instead of chica, along with realistic chicken wings accompanied by the text tasty fried chicken, hot and tasty, and fresh and spicy. There's also a flashlight freeze map which features the animatronics from the first game and vents. It seems to be a test leftover. The mobile exclusive Princess Quest minigame was meant to have a theme known as Castle Music Title Theme.OGG, which is a revamped version of the track Through the Cracks from Freddy in Space 2, which I'll be talking about in a few sections. The Help Wanted DLC, Curse of Dreadbear, has a few unused things. 
The logo for the DLC's old name, Rise of Frank and Freddy, remains in the game files. A different texture for the Freddles is left unused, apparently meant for a build a mangle level in the spooky mansion section. Since the texture appears burnt, they were dubbed burnt Freddles. Grim Foxy has an old animation that went unused, howling rather than raising his scythe. There are also various early icons with slight visual discrepancies. Even after the new levels were added in the DLC, the coming soon icons stayed behind in the game files. Finally, for pre-release content, there's just a handful of differences. An early screenshot showed a discolored Nightmare Fredbear, Spring Bonnie was originally featured on some promotional art for the game, further implying, along with the unused model, that he was meant to appear as Glitchtrap. In the PAX East demo, a fan-made cupcake model is featured by Super Kerbin from 2015. It was replaced later by Scott's official model. The last removed content is from the Curse of Dreadbear DLC, simply showing Dreadbear appearing in the spooky mansion hallway, which never happens in the final game. On November 25th, 2019, a mobile augmented reality game named Five Nights at Freddy's Special Delivery was released. There's a decent amount of content kept hidden in this game, starting with many faz facts that were intended to reveal extra lore that were not present in the release. In a similar realm, there are many unused emails which I will include a link to in the description as there are far too many to cover here. Interestingly enough, there's also evidence that the game was originally intended to have a paid VIP subscription service, likely including better rewards and overall making the game experience easier, as many paid options in mobile games tend to do. We can safely assume this service was scrapped in favor of delivery events and bug fixes due to time constraints. For some reason, Plush Trap has a handful of unused prototype gameplay assets which were removed upon him actually being added to the game about a year after its release. The prototypes weren't very faithful to the original design, and they were much improved when he was actually added. On a similar note, there are two entirely unimplemented animatronics. There is a beta version of Lefty, his CPU icon asset still existing within the files, and his old model and animations from 2019 also still being present. The second animatronic is Easter Chica, found in the files in 2020 for no apparent reason. Shamrock Freddy also has slightly different earlier assets. There are three unused shop renders, which is a shame because I think they look quite cool, but they were removed in an unknown update. In terms of pre-release content, there's only really three things worth noting. We can see in an old screenshot an early beta version of the HUD with some slight differences, like the remnant icon and an on-off caption for the flashlight. Before the implementation of the balloon reward system, they were originally meant to be FAS crates, tiered bronze, silver, and gold. Finally, there is some beta code that remains in the game in the form of an unused file. All it contains is values for some item drop rates, including unobtainable items such as that plus shoot and CPU, and bare endos plus shoot and CPU. Here I'm going to be combining two of the spin-offs into one section because their content individually is too small to constitute a whole section. So Freddy in Space 2 is a reference to a minigame in Five Nights at Freddy's World, FNAF 57 Freddy in Space. It's a silly side-scrolling 2D platform shooter that was made to promote a hashtag cancel cancer Five Nights at Freddy's charity livestream hosted by MatPat from Game Theory to fund St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Most of this game's unused content is in the form of simple sprites. A YouTuber named DJ Sterf did a beta test playthrough of the game, which shows some differences as well. Frank and Foxy's AI is partially unfinished and he was defeated much easier than in the final game. The S Cotton boss sprite was changed twice and was originally called Secret Boss X. There's also missing treasures, a pixelated red key, and this art that was later slightly changed. It is worth noting this character looks a lot like Roxanne from our next major game, but isn't confirmed to be her. A similar 2D side-scroller beat-em-up style game was made to promote the next major installment, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, named Security Breach Fury's Rage. This game has three squares. For some reason, the red one is smaller than the other two. And that's it. That's 
all of the unused content. <laughs> There's technically one more spin-off game, U2's Presents Five Nights at Freddy's, which is another AR game which was meant to promote their line of security breach merchandise. However, I had a hard time finding any information on the game, let alone unused content, so it seems to be generally unnoteworthy, so I'm going to be ignoring it in this discussion. At long last, we arrive at the last major installment in the series. Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. With DLC on the way later this year, the game is infamous for having an incredibly troubled production and a really, really buggy initial launch. Naturally, there is, frankly, an insane amount of cut content in this game due to its nature. Uh, according to the executive producer of Steel Wool Studios, the development team working on the game, future content updates are planned to re-implement, quote unquote, most of, the game's cut content, so this list may become outdated in the future, but will it really? Probably not. I'll begin with unused features. There was an extras menu similar to that of past games, which had tabs for a survival mode, mini games, office games, a character gallery, DLC, and credits, though it remains unimplemented. The survival mode was an unused gameplay mode where the difficulty, our length, and lives of Gregory were adjustable. He finally added the lives into the game, jeez. <laughs> the security levels of the rooms were raised, prize box spawning was randomized, though there was an option to spawn all of them, which was apparently very laggy, and at 12.50am, the daycare attendant spawns to enforce the time limit. But since the mode is unused, the prize boxes, Glamrock Freddy, and recharge stations are all completely unusable, so the player always dies. The character gallery had an obvious use, the character with view models of characters and some of the arcade cabinet models. It was removed from the files in the February 2022 patch. There are remnants, I get it, of a time and difficulty scaling feature, the difficulties being easy, normal, and nightmare, which was semi-preserved in the game's survival mode, even though that wasn't released. There are also many unused entities. A frozen Glamrock Endo can be found in the files, and there's even an unused side quest implied by the existence of unused lines that reference this frozen Endo. There are also six unused staff bot variants. These are the Anthropomorphic Test Device Staff Bot, meant for testing race cards in Roxy Raceway, the Nanny Staff Bot, kind of self-explanatory, the Server Staff Bot, shown in an early trailer, he wore a sombrero and served food at L Chips. A mime staff bot, likely meant for the daycare theater, a golf player staff bot, likely meant for Monty's Gator Golf, and a sales bot, which was intended to sell balloons around the Pizzaplex. As far as unused locations go, there are only a few. There are a few hallways found in the files accessed through utility doors. These doors acted as travel methods throughout the Pizzaplex, and they led from Rockstar Row to Roxy Raceway, Roxy Raceway to Phaser Blast, and Superstar Daycare to Monty's Gator Golf. The mechanic barely survives in the final game, as Monty can accidentally roam into the daycare when summoned by a security bot, and one mission sees Gregory sneak through a back area of Roxy Raceway to reach Rockstar Row. There's also an unused Fazcade Hive Room, complete with Beehive decals, and many access hallways that were likely made irrelevant by the implemented elevator system. There are four unused minigames. Bonnie Bowl, which is an early barebones bowling minigame that is really unpolished, and it was likely cut early in development because it was permanently removed in the February patch. Chica's Feeding Frenzy, which was hinted at via a duffel bag, and the arcade cabinet still exists in Monty's Gator Golf. The game is accessible through hacking, but is very unpolished and was also removed in the February patch. The third minigame was a minigame mission, which would trigger in Roxy Raceway after placing the head on the driver assist bot. The minigame was similar to the Pizza Bot's Pizza Bake minigame, but Gregory had to drive around the track. The game's initial release opted to not use it and skipped to Roxy's decommissioned cutscene instead. Despite this, assets such as scripts, UI graphics, and dialogue are found in the game still. Through hacking, you can spawn the cart and drive it around the Pizzaplex, and running into any animatronic causes them to ragdoll Gmod style, though you still get a jump scare. Finally, the Monte Golf Arcade was originally meant to be extended, including double the total golf holes and improved lighting on many existing holes. 
Shockingly, it appears to be in a better state than the one that ended up in the final product, even more of an indication of the disturbing development cycle of this game. There's also an absurd amount of unused collectibles, dialogue, and voice lines, the link to which will be in the description below since there are simply too many for me to talk about. Three unused assets also didn't make it into the final game. As we can all assume, Vanny was originally intended to have a much more active role in the game, as any main antagonist in a game should. This is supported by the inclusion of a Vanny meter in the game files, which can only be found using a debug tool. It was discovered that when the meter was full, Vanessa would become Vanny. Speaking of antagonists, one that actually goes overutilized in the fact that he shouldn't have been in the game at all, Burn Trap originally had a big role in the game. He has a chase sequence, a death animation, and even some unused audio in the game's files, but they're ignored, and the game simply skips to the ending cutscenes after the game is completed. For some reason, there's a cut texture for HAL 9000, the AI from 2001's A Space Odyssey, and I could not possibly tell you why this is. At long last, we're at the end, the pre-release content for Security Breach. There isn't actually much here just some inconsistencies from trailers and the NVIDIA showcase. There are some unused voice lines from Vanny, Roxy, Vanessa, and one to two quote-unquote unknown characters confirmed to be voiced by Matthew Curtis, who voices Nightmare Balloon Boy and Music Man. You will do as I say. You will bring me what I want. And if you fail me, then you will. Both of you burn! Finally, for some miscellaneous additions, the Magician Bot and Comedy Bot's unique models were unimplemented upon the game's initial release and re-implemented in version 1.07, and Freddy's unused loudspeaker for the Phaser Blast was a greeting for Pizza Plex visitors in the elevator, which were eventually added back into the game as well. Hey, superstars! It's me, Freddy! Welcome to the Mega Pizza Plex! Grab a jumbo slice of pepperoni and top it off with an ice cold fizzy fazz. Then enjoy our super games and attractions. Don't forget to stop by Rockstar Row and meet me in person. Have fun and have a fazerific day. That was not me. That was a recording. I want to make sure you are not confused. And that catches us up to the present day. I wanted to compile every game's unused content up till now in one succinct video since I hadn't seen anybody include all of the stuff from Security Breach yet. Though the list may change with the release of Security Breach Ruin later this year, I can't imagine it being too drastically different. If you enjoy longer informative videos of this style and like Minecraft, feel free to check out my entire 10 year history of Minecraft speedruns. On that note, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and share with a friend if you liked the content. Thank you for watching.